Welcome back to Lake of the Pines. I'm going to put my biggest fish during my stay in the boat during this episode. Unfortunately, the one thing that's not true right now is the weather I'm showing you. That's nothing like what you're about to see. We're at Lake of the Pines, baby. Three day trip on Lake of the Pines. I'm telling you right now, I'm stoked to be here. It's about kind of reminds me of Branson right now. And I'm going to show you the entire process of Lake O the Prines, telling you, showing you all the big fish that this lake has to offer. I've got a great uh, tour guide though. I'll tell you, this is uh, this is going to be a fun. We've got temperatures right now in the uh, low 40s and water temperature looks like it's roughly around 50. So we're gonna stay to the structure. I have done, uh, I've asked some questions, found out some, you know, where these fish might be. Typically they would be very deep uh, once the water hits that 30 degree weather or temperature, uh, but we're at 50. So they're probably still on structure, but we're gonna do a little bit of everything here. And uh, you're along for the ride. Lake O the Pines in Texas, Jefferson, Texas. I'm excited, let's find some fish. Folks, this video is sponsored by Pine Cove Cabin. You can reach them at pinecovecabin.com. Whether or not you're visiting the historical city of Jefferson or you're fishing for big slabs on Lake of the Pines, this is the place to stay. We're talking two bedrooms, two bath. It's right on the water. It just doesn't get any better. Folks, I've never been to Lake of the Pines until this week and I can tell you, this is an incredible tip I'm giving you. It doesn't get any more convenient to the boat ramps or to the water. You are right here on the water and you've got a great host in Glen Ferris. Check it out at pinecovecabin.com. Folks, you're gonna love it. All right, folks, welcome back. And here we are about to get started on one of the most miserable days you can have on the water. I'm talking about rain 100% of the time and up to 13, 15 mile an hour winds. In fact, I am the only boat on the lake at this time. I could not find anybody else, which I'm just going to say I must have really needed to fish, but I'm about to put some huge fish in the boat and uh, it's just a good time to be out on the water regardless of the conditions. And I'm a diehard folks. That's just how it is. All right, folks, I am going to have to do quite a bit of voiceovers because of the wind. Now, I was using Jinko baits, primarily the three inch shad and the tickle fry that look like Cajun cricket and their whatchamacallit color. Those were the keys for me, and also using a large 1 8 ounce jig head slasher head. So, we were fishing roughly 22 to 30 foot down and it was a combination of white crappie and black crappie. So I was also mostly using my 10 foot, three pound fishing elite series from Ozark Rods. And I stuck with the six pound uh, K9 fishing line. I didn't mess with it. Now I did add a bunch of weights to the line to get it down there and to fight the wind and that. Now I do see the advantage of using braid now because there is slightly some stretch in fluoro and certainly there is in mono obviously. But I can tell you that it didn't affect anything. I never lost a fish due to me using six pound line and I hoisted every single fish in the boat. I had no net. Alright folks, that's a 2.48.
This is a massive fish, and I can tell you how it happened. I was actually targeting a fish above it, and I saw this guy swimming directly below, and I went ahead and released my bail and let the line out for those four or five feet, and this thing did not hesitate. It went straight for it, and it was a thump, um, and it was amazing. Just a great fish. I didn't know I was dropping on it that big of a fish, but I'll tell you, you could clearly see the difference between what I was on and what was below it. Now, I would like to say that Lake of the Pines has definitely got its dangers, and this right here is a perfect example of it. I was told when I got there that once I saw timber on my side imaging, or anytime I got to half halfway across the lake, and you'll understand once you go to Lake of the Pines, that you need to put your trolling motor down and start trolling. And they were so right. There was a lot of things just underneath the surface that you could not see but you would run into if you just thought you could just run your motor very slowly. So I trolled once I saw the timber for the rest of the day. So very important to have a good battery backup, good strong trolling motor, that type of thing. Because you aren't going to be able to bust it around there and it's very unsafe if you did so. So I was fishing right outside of Johnson Creek. A lot of people also would come out of Alley Creek as well, but at the end of the day, when you come out of those creeks, once you start seeing timber, that's where you're going to start fishing, and it's such a large area. So there are a lot of boats, it tends to be, um, not on this day obviously, but most of the time, and you do have room to get away from the other boats if you choose to do so. But this day, we're just outside of Johnson Creek. All right, I'm not waving a white flag, but I am waving a white crappie, and that's it for me, folks. I can't take it anymore, but I've got a little treat for you. My host, Glenn Ferris, fantastic guy, took me around the town of Jefferson and gave me some history on it. And I'll tell you what, he's just he's a historian, a great guy that just knows a lot about the town. You're going to get a little piece of that here shortly. Train dresser right there is in 1897. So see, 1872, they hired this guy and he was in a balloon and they'd put him up every day and he drew this picture from a balloon. Oh, that really? Amazing. Isn't that cool? So basically we're right about here, I guess, isn't that? Yeah, about we're here? right down towards the end there. Yeah. So, but you can see, look how many industrial buildings and stuff there were. And then some of the stuff out here was like farms. Yes, and look at the racetrack. And the red, they had a racetrack. But that's 1872, right, right. after And you the can war. still um, walk around. So this is all built, uh, this was all drawn from a hot air balloon. He did, I think what he did is he did sketches from up there and then I he came back and sure. filled it in, you know, sure afterwards. He so he came, he came in, he just did the rough sketches of it. And like he'd come down and then he'd work on it. And, but this is, I think this is the original. It's a cool piece. That's awesome. You see like Bruce R, Brucius, 1872. It's a cool, cool piece. Yeah, it was amazing. So even though we didn't get to fish the entire day, which is the whole purpose we go down to Lake of the Pines, we got a great history lesson from Glenn Ferris on the town of Jefferson. It was uh, the city of Jefferson. It was fantastic and just an eye-opener. The guy is a historian 
uh, for the city of Jefferson. I'll tell you, um, he I, I believe he's actually going to start guiding on the lake, Lake of the Pines. So you want to check him out. And again, thanks for watching and please subscribe. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies.